Let's have a look at example two, which involves converting an activity table into a network, a directed network diagram. This is similar to example one. All I've done is I've changed some of the predecessors to see what, what effect it would have on the network diagram. So if you've looked at example one already, um, be good to compare uh, example two now to example one. So let's start. Activity Activities A and B do not have any predecessors. So why don't we start off with our starting vertex and draw in our two activities, A and B. Okay, so they're done. Now activities C and D depend on A and B being completed. Okay, so what you'll notice is that with pre in the predecessor column, if you have two vertices listed in the one row, it means that they somehow have to join together. Now we can't have A joining uh, onto B directly because that would create a multiple edge. We're not allowed to do that, okay? Remember, we can't have this sort of situation where you have two vertices um, basically connected via multiple edges, okay? So that's not allowed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a dummy, okay, a dummy activity connecting a with B. Now, now that A is joined back onto B, we can now draw in activities C and D. Okay. Okay. It says activities C and D. Okay. Branching off uh, the branching off A and B. Now E depends on D, but F depends on C and E. Okay. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw activity um, activity E joining on to activity C, okay, this way. So this is activity E, okay. So if you're not convinced, okay, so B, okay, so A and B join here at this vertex. From this vertex here, it branches off to activity C and D, which is correct here. E comes off D, so at the end of D, we, we draw in E. Now, F cannot continue unless C and E are complete. So in other words, when C reaches this vertex and E reaches this vertex, then we can start activity F. So there's our activity F there, and this is the finish. And this is the network diagram for activity two.